Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. <laughs> I'm Scott. I'm John. And we're married. Yes. And we are the Sweet Tea No Shade Knitting Podcast. Right. Um, I am Sweet Tea No Shade on Ravelry and Instagram. And you are? Um, on Instagram, I think I'm John Asbury. You are. And on Ravelry, I am I Love You, I Know, all one word. Does it bother you that I pronounce our name differently than you do? How do you pronounce your name? So we hyphenated our names, and so our la- our legal last name is now my name hyphen his name, mm-hmm. and so the Salisbury is was his name, mm-hmm. and I say it Salisbury. You say Salisbury. Salisbury, yeah. And I say Salisbury. That's okay. Does I that say, make it? I say as Bill. <laughs> I know that's not true, <laughs> but you just said Asbury, and it made me think of it because yeah. I say Salisbury, like Bury St. Edmunds. Yeah, in England they say Salisbury, Salisbury, Salisbury. Um, uh, now that we've gotten that out of the yeah. way, um, well, we are back. We are back. It's two been weeks. Two weeks. Uh, not eight months. So we're now averaging four months. Sure. A podcast. Sure. So that's pretty good. The more we do it, the more that <laughs> average turnaround time will yeah. shrink. Um, but we just had a lot of fun last time. And um, what I did was I sat down and I'm like, what are the things that stress me out about doing a podcast? And one of them is doing them on Sunday afternoon and then having to stay up late on Sunday to edit them. So now we're doing it Saturday afternoon. Mm-hmm. Um, we were going to do it Saturday morning, but we forgot that. We hadn't, well, I forgot that we hadn't watched the two movies that mm-hmm. we needed to review. So we, we squeezed that in, and also we were going to watch them last night, but somebody got tired. We watched one of them last night. We watched one of them last so, night. So, A for effort for me. Yeah, E for effort. So, um, yeah, so we're back. We got knitting to talk about. We yes. got um, movies to talk movies about. Movies to talk about. Um, but before we dive into that, just a couple. Um, Revisiting of some topics from last time. <coughs> um, um, so first of all, we talked last time about whether or not these are readers or cheaters, and it deter- I've determined through very scientific um, <laughs> research, which is also known as look looking at everybody's response in the comments. It sounds like there is no consensus. It's just readers or cheaters or whatever you. I call them cheaters. With. I think. I well, I think you and I both call them cheaters, but yeah. then sometimes people are like, "What are you talking about?" Right. Um, and so, just a couple things here. Um, first of all, we got to get the Betty Ann crap out of the way. Yeah, just um, just so you know, Betty Ann, this is our podcast, yeah, no not kidding. yours. You don't need to be taken to our comment section. That's right. Although, back off. What if we hired her to be our? Um, so oh, I just thought of something. We could hire her to be our video editor. No, I don't want to put that in no. her hands. We could be. We could, she could be our moderator. We could hire her to be our moderator. Don't you have to be moderate to moderate? Well, that's true. Um, I don't I, know. Bad I, idea. Sorry. I, I mean, I, I could we pay her not to be our moderator? <laughs> <laughs> that's probably a, ba- a better idea. <laughs> Addressing the Betty Ann taking over our comments, I had to give a shout out to the Suesberry who said that Betty Ann, what we're trying to say is Betty Ann is 39 plus shipping and handling. <laughs> I think the handling is the, the biggest part of that. Um, and then, weird small world connections, although only one of them is probably small, because everywhere Betty Ann goes, she tells every, she'll tell the UPS man, my my son and his husband have a podcast, you should watch it. Right. Um, and they're just leave me alone. And they're like, oh God, here comes Betty Ann again. Um, but Rachel Grable, 4566, Betty Ann's hairdresser is... It, commented which i think is awesome but i my heart goes out to rachel and what she has to deal with (laughs) but and then happy little so yeah and happy little yarn i'd forgotten that she who she has a podcast and you're knitting her hat pattern i knit her hat pattern. you knit her hat Mm -hmm. oh that was the one with the gradient yeah yeah she's from leesburg which is like the tiny little town where i grew up Mm -hmm. um so very very cool um and then kathy um kathy Layher? I can't read your handwriting. It's Kathy Layher 3580. So, Kathy was the person I ran into at um, Colorful Yarns. Colorful, Colorful Yarns, yeah. Colorful Yarns in Denver or Englewood. Um, 
eight months ago, and she said hi back in the comments. Yay! Very cool. Very cool. Oh, and this is where Betty Ann really got into our our vitally private in, in information. Hello, Linus. I don't know if he's showing up on camera or not. He may be. Um, it's I don't know if it's Juan A P or J U A N A P 132 said asked about our star signs. And Betty Ann felt the need to jump right in and say, Scott is a Taurus, can't you tell with his desire to be in charge? No pun intended. What has that got to do with... Because the bull charges? Oh, know. Lord. Okay, that's... You're right. Um, and John is a Scorpio. She was correct. Um, but... Oh, and this person is from Sweden. That's cool. Sorry, I hadn't read that until just now. John does seem to be more driven by feelings. And Scott, by sense and reason. Scott acts kind of like a father to John. <laughs> Gee whiz. We can unpack that later. Gonna, first of all, first of all, that, I mean, I'm not saying that J-U-A-N-A-P-132 is wrong, but we must come across very differently <laughs> on this than we are in real life because I am way more driven by feelings than John. Yes. I was, uh, I was brought up a good wasp. Yes. White, Anglo-Saxon, Protestant. Anyway. Yeah. Um, John doesn't. John likes to John likes to keep his feelings like treasure buried buried <laughs> deep down. <laughs> and I don't mean to be like a father to John. It's just that as Betty Ann said, I'm I like to be in charge and I can be very controlling and that's something that brings a lot of humor and, and fun to our relationship, isn't it, John? It really does. <laughs> um it's it's all because John is way more in control of his feelings and his ability to keep it together, and so I have to exert a sense of control because I don't really have any control. So that's what that's about. Um, and then, and then the last topic I wanted to touch on was the hat, which we're going to talk about. Actually, I'll just hold these comments for when we get to. I am going to show the hat and talk about the hat. So I'll wait until then. So I have. A finished object that I've already shown once, mm -hmm. which is the hat. I've got progress on a work in progress and a new cast on mm -hmm. and an acquisition. Mm -hmm. And you have just one work in progress. Right. So, so it's going to be the you show. It's going to be the... Oh, and I, I just hate that. I know. Okay. Um, well, I'll, I'll, be, I'll, be, I'll be giving commentary, though. So <laughs> Color commentary. Okay. So then I will start. So I'm going to talk, start about talking about the hat. So I blocked the hat... And it made the world, I don't know if I told you this, but I tried it on and it made a world of difference. Oh, you put it on now? Yeah. And as Bruce Mooney1277 said in the comments, I could just block the toque and wear it schmurf style with the large overcoat. It's giving Brooklyn fashion savvy and I'm here for it. Well, first of all, thank you. Um, second of all, oh, and he says, I'll see you next year. <laughs> like, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> As in, like, you're not going to podcast again for a oh, year. Oh, okay. I thought it was like, a little like, C-U-N-Y. Cooney? Mm, no, no. Okay. Stop there. Stop there. Okay. Um, anyway, I um, I did block it. Um, and I think it was Jody Banner 6946 who said something about using a pasta bowl or a balloon or something. Mm -hmm. And what I discovered was I blocked it and I pulled the it's not and you know one of the things that I talked about I think when I was talking about it before is I talked about it being co the color work section mm -hmm. and it's not really a color work section I mean it kind of is it's more of a cable section right but you're still car carrying the I know but I mean yeah. like it's not it's not like stranded color work but isn't it how did you because you carried it Behind. Yes, I'm just saying, my love. It's not. It's not. It doesn't look like. Right, right. Because somebody said turn it inside out and, and knit the color work inside out. Mm -hmm. That helps, and that's a really good idea. Except for these were these were cables and stuff. Okay. So that's that's the point I was making. Anyway, I I blocked it and stretched it in the in the mountain section, and it's much better. Um. So. It like it, 
It fits much better. Yeah, it's got a little slouch to it. A little, yeah, a little slouch to it. But also, it made it kind of. It ended up being kind of bigger than I intended, which Mm -hmm. it's none of that's gonna. Here's, (laughs) what do you need, my love? What do you need? What do you need? There you go. All right. So as as we were, um, I blocked it. I stretched it. It fits much better now. Um, Having said all that, we just got back from Mexico. We went to um, for like a five day vacation with three other couples. We all live in the neighborhood together, and we're all really good friends. My friend Gio, I I was knitting this for my friend Gio, which I think I've said about a thousand times. He, I forgot that he had tried it on before and it fit. And he was fine with it because he said to me when we were on vacation, he said, if it's, if what's holding you back at giving it to me is that the fit issues, he's like, it's not an issue. Right. So, um, so I think now that I've blocked it too, it's much, yeah. it's going to fit much better. So I will be giving that to him very soon. Cool. Next time I see him, I got to weave in the ends, but other than that, yeah. So that turned out great. The blocking is really, I just needed to, how many times have I said this? Just either follow the pattern or follow the process. Like, just do it. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid of everything. So, so that was that. Good. Um, And so I will give one more update on my other thing and then, oh, and I'm sorry, I forgot to say, um, this is from the Knitting the National Parks book by Nancy Nancy Bates. Um, and this is the the one in North Dakota. Badlands. Badlands. Um, and is it Badlands? I think so. Or that, I thought the bad. Now I'm confused because I thought the Badlands was in South Dakota. Okay, Badlands is in South Dakota. Now I'm all confused because yeah. the it's like um, the one in North Dakota is like it's a former president. It's Teddy Abraham Rose- Lincoln or Teddy Roosevelt Teddy or Roosevelt. Abraham Lincoln. I can't remember. Anyway. Um, yeah, so that's where this came from. Um, yeah, so moving on. Um, nope, not that. So this, um, these are the socks that I, oh, I've got a couple swatches in here to show later. Um, the, these are the, um, socks that I'm knitting for my friend, Tra- actually my friend Tracy, which is Gio's wife, now that I think about it. Um, and so I don't remember where I left off last time. I think I had just done the heel flap. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, um, cause I have one done and then this is the second one that I'm working down the foot. Um, and let me slow down. Let me slow down and hold it up. Um, but I, I, on this one, I made a boo-boo and when I went and picked up the, um, what's it called the the stitches on the side of the heel flap Mm -hmm. to do the gusset i accidentally knit a whole round with the heel flap color oh (laughs) so there's a little one little row of the multicolored lighter color but that um, that's That's fine that just shows that it's handmade right um and so and i don't know if we talked about this last time but this bag i stole from you because you bought it and i'm like no i want it okay I, I feel like project bags. It's really not. Oh, they're stealing. communal, right? Yeah, I don't. But I don't see the maker doesn't have a tag on here, so I don't know. I mean, we got it somewhere in Minnesota because that's the. Oh, that's the blue rooster mm-hmm. from from the sculpture garden. There's a giant blue rooster sculpture in the sculpture gardens here. Um, and so just even though I'm repeating myself, this is Viking Fiber Co. Um, Oh, and this is what led to the conversation about you being at Colorful Yarns yep. and running into um, Kathy. Kathy. Um, so, yeah. So, this is that's this. Oh, and it's the colorway. What did we figure out last time? Mouse. <laughs> Manus Glow. Okay. Um, and then, I don't know what the multicolored blue is. It was uh, from the... Sh- so, we have a shop hop here locally that's about to happen again. Yep. Um... And their color was their color or their it was a blue it was basically a set of three colors blue red, red and, and green. green I knit that shawl for Betty Ann with them right. and that was left over but I don't know what it is yeah. so there's that so I'm making good progress on that I'll get those done here probably before the next time we podcast <laughs> probably Depends on how many podcasts fit, right? <laughs> exactly. 
Um, and so that's going well. I that I took that with me to Mexico and knit on that mm-hmm. in Mexico, even though Tracy and Gio were with us in Mexico, and so they were they were all playing cards. A group of our friends were playing cards, and I was knitting it under the table so that she couldn't see it. I thought you'd seen it though. No, she hasn't seen him. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Although the yarn ball did roll under the table, and okay. she picked it up and handed it back to me, Uh-oh. so now she knows what color blue they are. Right. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's the Rose City mm-hmm. Rollers sock pattern, which is the pattern I always do, um, and then I just modify it by putting a leg and mm-hmm. a cuff on it, stuff like that, so. Cool. All right, your turn. Sure. Um, this is my work in progress. Um, this is the Alberta... Um, striped vest, although it's not striped, but you can make it striped. I was like, I don't feel like doing that. Um, it's a Brooklyn tweed pattern by Jared Flood, and um, the yarn. That's I'm using... not Jared Flood in that picture, is it? No, no. Okay, Jared... I didn't think it was. Yeah. Um, and the yarn I'm using is um, Lucky Tweed by Oh, good lord. Okay, um, yeah. Read it? Would you mind? It's Lucky. It's it's Kelburn Woolens. Right. Lucky Tweed. And the color... It's 100% Merino Wool. And the colorway is... Tomato. Tomato. So, um, I bought this yarn several years ago to make one sweater vest. That turned out to be a disaster, so I'm making this one now. Um, so, the fun thing about this one is... Um, I'm sorry. Oh, um... The other one that you did. Uh huh. Did you re? What did you do with that yarn? Did you save it? <sighs> well, I saved some of it, but I mostly threw it away. Really? It wasn't worth trying to. Well, the problem was it was um, because I had two different. I was the um, yarn I was using was from two different. Um, oh lord! Two different skeins. Two different skeins, different dye lots, yeah. and so I was doing like every other row. It would have been a disaster. And so I did yeah. that for this one here. But, um, oh. because... I Are they wanna... different dye lots? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, wow. That I looks think. great. Yeah, exactly. I mean, they, they may or may not... I had unwound the balls, but I knew they were... At least one of them was from different dye lots. Gotcha. So, <clears throat> about done. Um, so, the way with this one is kind of fun is, instead of opening holes up, I mean, making holes, armholes... <laughs> Or, or like, saving off stitches to create yeah, the armholes. Yeah, armholes. So, what you do is you put some... Gotta, yeah. There you go. Put some stitches on um, waist yarn, and then you cast on some, like five stitches, and then you knit up, and eventually this area right here will all be steeped. Um, so there's two armholes, and then <laughs> imagine uh, how that works. <laughs> I know, crazy. And then crazy. up here is the neck, right here. So this will this will cut. And turn. Oh, you steep the neck too. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. It's so cool. Well, that I mean, is it um, is the size of the neck? How do I say this? Do you get to determine the size of the neck, or no. do you? Does the pattern require you to steep it a certain amount? What do you mean? Well, you we in the last episode, and and I, mm-hmm. you know, having watched you knit stuff, you were talking about not liking the collars be so big. Since you get to steek it, can you steek it to the width that you want? No, no. It'll be um, it's gonna be a V neck. Oh, 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 oh. So, and it's a um sweater You're vest. Putting all that right in front of the microphone. No. I don't know if that matters. So, but it's ahead. a sweater vest. So it's there's not really the collar is not. I know. Yeah. I, I forgot it was a yeah. V-neck and stuff. So yeah. Um, so yeah, well, eventually I'll just cut up right through here. Um, and the fun thing is what, you know, I don't... It's it's weird because to make the hole bigger, you um, decrease the stitches on each side of the steek. Oh. So that's kind of fun. Um, so I am really close to being done. I think once I get to... Um, Gosh, I I didn't realize how much you'd done of that. Well, it's a, it's as I said, like once you, it's a basically just a big tube. So like once this here gets to ten inches, um, that's gonna look so good on you. Yeah, I'm really I love this color. Um, I get to do shoulder shaping, graft it together, and then cut. 
graft it together. Oh, mm, I don't understand the grafting it together. So you do have to take so the Kitchener stitch. Yeah, you have to Kitchener the shoulders together. That's what the pattern says. So why? I thought that the whole point of steaking was so that you didn't have to. So you have to do two strips. Just like way up here, just up here. You do shoulder shaping, short rows, and then you wrap Where's the short. Where's the neck? The neck is. Is this the neck? This is the. This is the. So sorry. Right here is the neck. So what will happen is, I will do at a certain point up here. I will graft this together. Oh, got it. And then to make my cuts. And then you steak this part. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And then you pick up stitches and do the ribbing. Got it. Okay. So anyway, I... So part of the neck will be open, and then part of the neck will need to be steaked to create the V. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So, um, but yeah, it's a really good pattern. I, you know, haven't figured out if I'm going to... Um, some people um, link to a couple steaking tutorials. Um, I don't know if I'm going to sew, use a sewing machine or crochet or embroider my steaks. Um, I will probably just go to our friend Matt and Jeffrey's house and use a sewing machine because that seems to be um, the consensus. Well, it seems to be the simplest mm. um, and the fastest. So, but yeah, I'm I'm pretty excited about it. I think it'll be done really soon. Very cool. Um, and yeah, I think it'll I think it'll fit. So, but yeah. Um, and I think, like, if I like this, I might... So this is the the original pattern, which has is, is sort of striped. Um, and I may make a striped version of this. Like, why not? Well, and this is the type of yarn that's going to allow you to block it to the size you need. Yes. Yes. In case it's too small. Yeah, I don't think it will be. Um, I haven't tried it on, but yeah. I think it'll be... I think it'll be good. So awesome. anyway... Yes. I just like, you know, it hadn't, I hadn't, I always see you over there knitting on it, but yeah. I, it's like, wow, you're yeah, it's, bopping right along. So yeah, I've been working on this for, I don't know, maybe in a month and a half. I don't even know. Yeah. It's it's a pretty, I mean, number one, it's decently, I think it was Aaron White, maybe? Um... So it's 210 yards for 100 grams. Maybe it's worsted. Or 190 meters for 100 grams. I think that's worsted, maybe. It's a number four medium. Sure. Whatever that means. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay, cool. So yeah, that's that's that. So hopefully we'll have that um, ready to go really soon. And I'll have my... Um, I love steeped. Yes. Well, I have a new cast on. Mm -hmm. I haven't cast it on yet, so does that count? I've swa gauge swatched. For I feel it. like that's a that's a that's, new project. You've cast on your swatches. I've completed my swatches. There you go, even better. And I've purchased all the yarn. So this is a funny story. So I watch a lot of TikToks. I find and by proxy and by proxy, so does John. I think they're really hilarious and entertaining. Scott and was all in a vine, too. When I was, was a thing. deep into vine. I love the little comedy things that people put out there. Um, and my friend Jenny, um, she also watches a lot of TikToks. And so we will send each other our favorite TikToks. And she, the other day, sent me a TikTok and said, will you please make this for me? And I, knowing Jenny... She was like 51% kidding and 49% serious. But if I had said, oh, ha, 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 you know, whatever, she would have been like, she wouldn't have thought twice about like, oh, ha, 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 I can't do that. Mm -hmm. She wouldn't have thought twice about it. But I said, uh, my response was, OMG, I'm immediately finding that pattern and making that for you. So we're going to try to insert the TikTok here. If not, there'll be a link in the show notes. Yes, but it's from... So it's the the TikToker's name is Noah Kearns and it's livin.in.co, living in Colorado. It's hilarious. Just watch. I was raised to find a job that would pay the bills. So I'm a whole ass accountant. A fucking accountant. You wanna know why I picked accounting? It was the first thing on the degree list. It was at the top. So I chose. My husband 
chose knitting because he was told that he can be whatever he wants in life and to follow his dreams. Okay? And like, yes, he's amazing. He designed this. He knitted it. It's called the Sugar Glider Cardigan. You can wear it like this. Put a nice little pin in the front. Or you can put your arms in the sleeves. Wear it like this. Keeps you very warm. I filed our taxes. So when he put his arms in the sleeves, my head exploded because I was like, that is the coolest thing ever. So I'm like, I, there's got to be a way I can find this pattern. So first thing I did was I went to Ravelry and he doesn't have the pattern on Ravelry. So then I was like, okay, I'm going to Google the sugar glider cardigan. And it took me to their, his husband's yarn shops page, which is Elevation Yarn and co where is it it's the one that's in your mom's town it's in littleton oh okay cool you don't we... listen to anything I no, no 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 no. i didn't put two and two together um we've not been to it though have we no i don't think so okay and i don't know how long it's been open okay but um so sorry it, it's the little interaction you just saw the Yarn store, the physical yarn store is in Littleton, Colorado, which is where John's mom lives. Just weird small world mm -hmm. um, coincidence. So, and we're definitely going to go the next time we go to Colorado. Sure. So, I, so he has the pattern for sale on his page. So I knit the, or I knit the pattern. I purchased the pattern and downloaded it. I think it's about 10 pages, but it's an extremely well-written pattern. He does this great job of helping you determine how much yarn you need and how helping you determine you know do the gauge and I, I mean it's it's the same thing that a lot of patterns have but he just the way that he does it is just it's really the pattern is really well done now having said that i've not knit the pattern yet so maybe i'll run into issues but um i'm just very 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 excited i think it's going to be a really fun pattern the other thing is that it's brioche and i have not knit brioche before you have, mm -hmm. and I'm excited to knit brioche. So I was hoping to use stash yarn, and it calls for worsted for the collar and the sleeves and all that, and then it calls for DK or sock yarn here held double for the web, the sugar glider webbed wings, wings part. So I went to my stash and just could not find the colors that I wanted with Jenny in mind, my friend Jenny, who I'm knitting it mm -hmm. for in mind. So I'm like, okay. Plus I continue, and I know this is something that I think all knitters struggle with, but that whole thing about yarn sizes are not 100% scientifically standard. Right. And there's a lot of variation within. And that's okay. And I have to learn to live with that. <laughs> but um, especially because I think DK and Worsted can be so close to one another. So what, did I, what I ended up doing was going to... So I, I had last Wednesday, I had the day off. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to go to a bunch of different yarn stores and find exactly what I want. Um, and then... So... So so I'll, I'll show my yarn and then I'll explain what I decided. So I went to a new yarn store. Well, it's it was open. La it opened last October. It's called Dandelion Fiber Arts. Sorry, Dandelion Fiber Company. And it's in Minneapolis. And it's a couple blocks from our friend Steve's house. And so we had talked about wanting to go there. And I looked at it online. Harris, what have you got in your mouth? Okay, our dog is very, very smart. Too smart for his own good. He finds little pieces of plastic to put in his mouth, and he knows if he brings us pieces of plastic, we'll we don't, tra we'll we don't want to eat. He, we don't want him to eat it, so we'll trade him with some treat or something. So, yeah. anyway, um, what was I talking about? So I went. So we had wanted to go to Dandelion Fiber Company. It's in a space that used to be a women's 
clothing store for decades um, in South Minneapolis on Lindale. For those of you who Lindale and it's close, I think it's like Lindale and Fortieth. Yeah, it sounds about right. Um, and so we, I went. So I was gonna. Oh, sorry. I went online. I looked at the pictures, and the pictures don't do the store justice. It looks big and open and spacious, like there's not a lot of yarn there. And so I thought, well, I'll stop by there, see what they have. Um, but probably not. I, they probably won't have a project. This is, I would say this is like a sweaters mm -hmm. quantity of yarn. And I'm like, I will probably not be able to purchase a sweater quantity of one color or two colors in this store because it didn't look like they had much. So I'll go there and then I'll go to the other like Stephen B or... Um, Harriet and Alice, other yarn stores near us, and Three Kitten Needle Arts. And so it's crazy how many yarn stores we have in mm -hmm. Minneapolis and how many we have within like a 10-minute drive of us. Oh, it's yeah. amazing. So <clears throat> I went in. It's beautiful store. The inside is beautiful. Um, hardwood floors, and she just – it's immaculately organized – and so I started walking around, and she had this wall of yarn, and I can't remember what the other dyers were, but she had a whole wall of Farmer's Daughter fibers. And I have bought Farmer's Daughter a couple times. Um, one of them, the first sock blank I ever purchased was Farmer's Daughter. And every time I buy, far, I don't know anything about it. Um, but every time I buy it, I love it. Mm -hmm. So this is, um, and I'll explain the, what I purchased and how I'm going to use it and all that in a minute. But, um, I purchased, so the yarn, all of the yarn that I purchased is their Pishkin, um, line or, or mm -hmm. base. And it looks like there's a Pishkin reservoir in Montana and it also looks like says for more than a thousand years native americans native american men and women of the great plains hunted bison by driving them over cliffs buffalo jumps or pishkins are found throughout montana east of the continental divide okay so pishkin comes from the blackfeet word meaning deep blood kettle these sites were suitably named scores of bison were driven over the cliffs and slaughtered okay well moving on <laughs> um the it's a hundred percent montana and wyoming rambouillet I think that's how you say that. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that is all merino. I think it's a type of merino. So I think it's synonymous with merino when I looked at mm -hmm. Rambouillet on Wikipedia. So there's this whole wall and I'm, and I'm looking at it and I'm like, oh, wait a second. She's got, and it doesn't have a, um, a weight on it, but I looked at the weight in the pattern, which it, or the, sorry, the, the reference yarn, which is, uh, da, da, da. what yarn did they use as a reference? Sampled with Juniper Moon Blue Faced Luster, mm. 202 yards per 100 grams. This is 255 yards per 100 grams, which means that it's thinner yarn mm -hmm. or lighter yarn, however you want to say that. Uh, but I'm like, you know what? I think it'll work fine. And if you like it, that's, yeah. I think. I mean, it's close enough. It's not yeah. like I'm trying to do it with fingering weight or right. something like that. So I bought. So, so I also didn't know Jenny's size because the way that you size this, because it's it's not a fitted sweater, it's it's a, like a, a wrap. shawl or a wrap, wrap yeah. that you can then put your sleeve arms in the sleeves. So I, it's you have to measure. It says, well, I'm not going to read it because I don't want to give the pattern away. But basically, you measure from armpit to armpit across the back, mm -hmm. and then you do some calculations from there. And so then that's how you determine how much yarn you need and all of that. Mm. But I just picked a number in the middle, um, which I think is actually going to be perfect. Yeah. So I, so what I'm going to do is there is the collar, which is becomes the sleeves and the, which is one color. And then there's the wings. So I'm going to do the collar and the all of that in this green which is um, their colorway is bonsai mm -hmm. and then for the for the wings i'm going to do and i don't know what the right term is when you when you talk about brioche like the foreground color sure um is going to be this 
um, topish brown, which is mm-hmm. elk antler. Mm-hmm. And then what I'm going to do is for the background color, mm-hmm. I'm going to use some kind of wild colored yarn mm-hmm. embedded within it. Yep. Or, or sorry, as the second color, which kind of with brioche is, kind the, of background is the background yeah. color. And so it's going to be this kind of plain, not plain, but like neutral. Yeah, with the fun colors in between. With the fun colors in between. So I'm going to show you the fun colors. So I bought. Like I What'll said, be fun though is on the outside, it'll be the this color, color will be predominant. Yeah. And in the inside, you'll have the wild, crazy colors predominant, which will be yeah. super fun. So, and this yarn, just, I love the feeling of this yeah. yarn. So I bought seven skeins of the green. And I bought four skeins of the uh, elk antler. Um, and I think that's going to be more than enough. Yes. So what I decided to do was um, I these are the colors that are going to be on the inside. And so these two are similar. And actually, no, they're not the same. Okay. Yeah. Uh, these two are similar. So I'm going to... And, and then these two are similar. So I can't decide if I'm going to do... You know what you think you should do? One wing this no, no. and I, one wing that. I have an idea. What? Do one half of the wing with this and then one half of the wing like that. Yeah. I think that'd be really cool. That's what I... That's what, And I think... I mean, looking at the way that they did it, mm-hmm. I, I think... They definitely did stripes. They did stripes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's the other thing I could do is I could do like stripes, do back and forth, and do stripes of those two. See, like in so be like, see how he did stripes. Yeah, I could do stripes. I don't know how many stripes there are. Yeah, but um, yeah, super cool. And you hold this double, so right. um, yeah. So the these four yarns are. This one is Stitch Together, Stitch Together's Mid Coast String, Targeeling, or Targeeling, mm-hmm. since it's Targi, Targeeling Twist, which is 80% Targi, 10% Babu, 10%, 10% Tussa. Sure. Um, odds and Ends. <laughs> Mid Strings. I don't know what all this is. I don't know, because we bought this. A stitch together yarn. Harris, go boy. I don't know when or where we bought this, but um, I, the, for these, this yarn, I don't know where we purchased it. It's stitched together, rad yarn for rebels. Okay. Stitch together studio, targeeling twist. I believe is the mm-hmm. base, and it's. I want to say odds and ends is the colorway. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's 10%, oh wait, it's in, oh, this is hand dyed in Iowa. Cool. Um, 80% Targi, 10% Bamboo, and 10% Tussa, which I don't even, I've never heard of that. Mm -hmm. This one is from our friend Nancy, Trilogy Yarns, her plush base, and it is a herd of turtles, Mm -hmm. which is, uh, um... A Betty Ann saying, right? I mean, it's not, but Betty Ann didn't make it up, but I think Betty Ann probably got it from her dad. What? I for, now I'm blanking on how you use that. It's like. Off like a herd of turtles. Off like a herd of turtles. That's what it is. Um, and then this one, the next two are from Die Monkey Yarns, Jessica, and she is. Dying again, and I think her store is open and all oh, that. Oh, good, again. good. It's been a, I mean, I think it's been like a year or something. That right, it's been open again. But okay, so cool. that's exciting. Die Monkey Yarns, and this is Macaw. This is her hip hop monkey base. I bought this a while ago. This is Macaw. So I don't know if any of these colors are still available. Right. Um. But and then this one is also um, Die Monkey Yarns, and it's her Mosh Monkey base. And it's 7525 Golden Aspen Skies. I don't think I said what this base is, but it's 100% Super Wash Merino. So all four of these are fingering weight, and so I'm going to have to hold them double mm-hmm. um, to go along with this, which is going to be the foreground color. So Super cool. I am very, very, very excited. So I it calls for a number eight in the pattern. 
Uh, number eight, American Eight, which is a da -da -da -da, five millimeter uh, needle. And I, so I knit my gauge swatch with that, blocked it and all. And it was, and I was off by four stitches across four inches. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Gauge swatch across four inches. Yeah, I was, so it called for 20 stitches across four inches and I was at 24. So then I knit this, second, I went up to a 10, knit this gauge swatch, and it ended up being like 20 and a half mm -hmm. across, or so I'm like a, a half an inch or half a stitch over. And I figured that can be... I mean, I blocked this out pretty flat. Right. And it's also not fitted. Right. It's not fitted. And so, so and if it's a little baggy, I think that'll be, Jenny she will can, like that. She can swirl around yeah. and do her Stevie Nicks with that. <laughs> yes. So, I did my gauge swatches. I'm ready to cast on. I got my needles. I got, I got my yarn. I got everything ready to go. So, I am excited to start this project. Awesome. And this one, I'm less <clears throat> worried about because it's not a fitted sweater. Yeah. And so I'm a lot. I'm, it's I'm basically a shawl with armholes. Exactly. Well, yeah, that's a good way to Or think a wrap about. with armholes. Yeah. Um, cool. That'll be super fun. I'm excited to see it. And like brioche is, once you figure it out, it's really easy. Yeah, I'm not worried about. And it's really easy to read, is the other thing. Yeah, I'm not worried about that. I'm not afraid. I ain't afraid of brioche. That's good. You should. No one should be afraid of brioche. It just takes a little longer to knit yeah so i think the last yarn thing we have to talk about is betty ann wanted credit right although our whole plan thank you betty ann who she always she can't wait for anything our whole plan was to get our new yarn room organized and then show it that way right but we we're in the process of organizing our stash Prior to this, we had our yarn set up in the room, the bedroom that I use as a home office. I had some of the yarn up. Um, and then basically any skein that we had used part of, we had in Rubbermaid mm -hmm. bins. We had two giant Rubbermaid bins full of partial skeins. And then we went... So Benny Ann doesn't knit really that much anymore. And so she gave us all... She's a quitter. Of, she's a quitter. And she, so she does cross stitch now mostly. She gave us all of her knitting stuff. Two large boxes. Two giant boxes. And so we shipped them from Georgia last time I was there. Mm -hmm. um, so we are, it's wonderful to have it. Oh yeah, yeah. Very exciting. Um, we ended up, she gave us like three different um, interchangeable, interchangeable yeah. needle sets. Like she gave us a, an amazing amount of stuff. We'll never need to buy anything ever again. Yeah, <laughs> right. So, um, but we will be showing off our new yarn room once we get that organized. We have a lot to organize. Yeah. Um, plus, there's a lot of all those partially used skeins. Mm -hmm. I think we're just going to have to say, oh, that looks like DK or oh, that looks yeah. like worsted and yeah. just kind of organize it by color or something yep. because is what it is um yeah so thank goodness for ikea because that's what we're <laughs> using to um <laughs> using to for our yarn yeah um but yeah so that'll that'll be i don't know when that'll be in, yeah. the, in the future in the future so um, now through the magic of television we're going to transition and do our movie review section of our podcast lovely so, so we did 1989 yeah, keep talking. I'm going to look the stuff up. So, um, the worst, the best picture of that year um, was Driving Miss Daisy. Oh, do you want to introduce what we do? Oh, yeah, yeah. So, this is our movie review section. What we're doing is we're looking at movies and reviewing or rewatching and talking about the best movie of the year, as determined by the Academy Awards, and the worst movie of the year, as determined by the Golden Raspberries. So, these are the 1989 award winners. Um, these are the movies from 1989. Um, the Oscars were in 1990. Um, and the best picture is Driving Miss Daisy. And the worst picture is Star Trek V, The Final Frontier. Um, Why don't we do the best picture first? Because yes. I always think the worst picture is funnier. 
Yes. So, or it's, it's either funny or super depressing. Well, true. So. So we'll start with Driving Miss Daisy. Which we watched this morning. Which we watched this morning. So Driving Miss Daisy, it was, so the description on IMDb is an old Jewish woman and her African-American chauffeur in the American South have a relationship that grows and improves over the years. Uh, it was based on a play by Alfred Uri? Sure. U-H-R-Y. Um, that had come out a couple years as an off-Broadway play that had come out a couple years prior, in I think 1987. So it was released on January 26th of 1990. Okay. So I guess probably it counts as 89. Oh, the open. Sorry. <laughs> Why does it say opening weekend and wide release is? So it's basically opened. Like in limited release in December and then why? Oh, release. that I do know that it, yeah. there was it was like th- opened in three studios right. or three theaters on December seventeenth, nineteen eighty nine, and then wide release on January twenty sixth, nineteen ninety. Oh, there we go. The director is Bruce Bearsford. Okay. Prior to this, he had directed a movie, Her Alibi. Okay. But I think the most notable one that I know of before that that he had directed was Crimes of the Heart, mm-hmm. and then after this, he did. Some movies that I don't recognize. Mr. Johnson, Black Robe, Richard I wonder Love. if he's a theater director. Paradise for the City. He directed Double, Double Jeopardy, Jeopardy which movie. is an amazing movie. So the budget was about $7.5 million, mm-hmm. And the worldwide gross was $145, almost $146 million. So it did pretty well. It was an hour and 39 minutes long. And did he win Best Director too? I think it might have been a split. It was a split, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Okay. So, Driving Miss Daisy won. The other nominees were Born on the Fourth of July, Dead Poet Society, Field of Dreams, and My Left Foot. Mm -hmm. I thought um, the Spike Lee movie was nominated. Oh, no, no, no. Kim Basinger went up and made a big speech about how it wasn't. Oh. Do the Right Thing was also from that year, and it's like one of the famous, like... Academy didn't nominate for anything type right. thing. Yeah. Um, and Spike Lee did say, I read a quote from Spike Lee that said, uh, they, you know, the snub, the Oscar snub of not being nominated for anything. And he said, yeah, well, I don't think they teach Driving Miss Daisy in film school. <laughs> Which I thought was pretty good. Um, so for director, I th- so I think this was, one of the things about this was that the director... Um, that one was Oliver Stone for Born on the Fourth of July. The director was not even nominated. The movie? The director of Driving Miss Daisy wasn't even nominated for Best Director. Interesting. It's a a best picture that nobody directed. And that's what the guy who presented... Yeah. Or there was some comment that somebody made during the show about... Or maybe it was the next year or something like that. Driving Miss Daisy, the movie that was directed by no one. Yeah. (laughs) Okay, so it did. So the movie got nine nominations and four wins. So best writer, or the screenplay was Alfred Uri, which mm. he wrote the play. Actress in a leading role. Oh, sorry, the Alfred Uri did win. Mm-hmm. Actress in a leading role, Jessica Tandy, and at the time she was the that so she was eighty, and mm. she was the oldest person or woman that yeah. had won the actress best actress makeup. Um, and Best Picture. And it was also nominated for Art Direction, Actor in a Supporting Role for Dan Aykroyd, Costume costume Design, Film Editing, and then Morgan Freeman for Actor in a Leading Role. So... I'm going to bring a brief synopsis. So, it's basically the story of... And I, I saw the play that was recorded... And it was Angela Lansbury Mm -hmm. and James Earl Jones. James Earl Jones. Mm -hmm. And they must have done it on Broadway or something. Sure. And it was recorded and then played at a movie theater. So is the the play a two-person play? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, that makes sense. It was just the two of them. Yeah. And it was pretty, pretty, I mean, it was was an amazing Mm -hmm. play. Um, so I, I was glad that I got to see the play, but um, 
It's basically, I mean, it's set, it starts in the 40s and ends mm-hmm. in the late 60s. Mm-hmm. And it's um, just kind of about, I mean, I don't want to necessarily go into the whole story, but because that's boring, but it's, you know, this woman is, is getting older and so she has a, a slight car accident um, and so her son hires mm-hmm. um, Hoke, mm-hmm. who is... Um, Morgan, Morgan Freeman. Freeman's character to drive her around mm-hmm. and it's just it kind of takes a look at the race relations at that time um, and how you know he and the woman that was like the cook that mm-hmm. was hired like the hired help they you know were treated like the help and mm-hmm. they were kept in the kitchen like had to eat in the kitchen and all that kind of stuff and just kind of analyze the interaction between the races at that time and they go on a road trip and he's not allowed to use the restroom because they colored people aren't Mm -hmm. allowed to use the restroom in the place in the gas stations and so there there's kind of an analysis of all that but simultaneously she's jewish in the south her she and her son their Mm -hmm. family's jewish in the south and so there's that kind of Mm -hmm. oppression parallel or or marginalizing of their community and at some point, her temple is bombed, and I, the way I interpreted that whole scene was that she didn't want to. It was too scary to her mm-hmm. to think that she could be treated the same way that he was being treated. Mm-hmm. Is that kind of how you read that? Yeah, or that um, this idea that you have a certain amount of safety in being white that you don't have being African American. And that being all of a sudden violated because they're bombing African American churches and they're bombing temples at the same time. So yeah. it's, that's 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 something. And the KKK being targeting both Jewish people and African American mm-hmm. people. They didn't ever come out and say anything about the KKK. But yeah. you know, I think I think at some point he said the same people who do all this stuff. Yeah. So yeah, it's always the same people. I right. think he said. And they're also, as soon as they find out about the temple bombing, he makes a reference to his friends. Um, father, father who, who was lynched. lynched yeah and she's like why did you tell me that story right and it's it's almost like she doesn't want to be comp- he wants i think he wanted to find a common ground between them mm-hmm. and to let her know that he felt her pain basically right, and she right. didn't want to be lumped together in that right. way yeah so anyway it was the it, most important thing about it is patty lapone's in it <laughs> patty lapone is in it that's right she's a florine florine the high maintenance, do- maintenance daughter in law um yeah. and it's just it's very funny because you're like that's patty lapone um just showing up and being being patty lapone yeah so um, yeah but it's you know and it it I, I feel like a couple times it makes you think that she has died, but she she never dies in the movie. Right. She's you she's know aging. Yeah, she, yeah. She's in her nineties at the end. At the yeah. end, and he goes to visit her, and he's probably in his seventies or yeah. more. Um, in at the end of the movie, and he goes to see her to visit her in the nursing home, and um, she seems kind of out of it mm-hmm. and she tells her son to get lost. And then they sit there and have a, a conversation. You could tell that yeah. for, at least for that moment, she knows kind of where she is and yeah. everything. So very good. And at one point she tells him that he's her best friend right. and, and all that. Anyway, it, it was a really, it's, I've seen it probably 10 times. <laughs> so it's, it's a good movie, but it's also yeah. one that my family watched a lot mm-hmm. um, when it came out. And so, um, yeah, yeah. So I think I'd anything? seen it in the theaters and I had not seen it since. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, cool. So one of the things that we did eight months ago <laughs> when we started reviewing the best and worst pictures was put together a list of questions that we would discuss. Mm-hmm. And that's what I'm working through is the checklist of mm-hmm. questions. And one of the things, one of the questions that we said we were going to discuss every time is what was the best performance in the movie and what was the worst performance in the movie? I don't know that there really was a worst performance. No. I didn't... I felt like Dan Aykroyd wasn't right for the part that he played. He's well, so, he's he's so Dan like it's hard. He's one of those people who's like, oh, that's Dan Aykroyd, right? And I think I thought he was he was he was fine in the movie, but like you're like that's Dan Aykroyd. But his acting came across to me as though he were he was acting as though he was in a play and not in a movie. Sure, like he was acting for the back row. Sure, and, and whereas I feel like 
with some of like with Morgan Freeman with some of his tics that mm-hmm. he had and some of the yes I'm a no I'm yeah. and, and the he was a lot more subtle and yeah. Dan Aykroyd was you know being Dan Aykroyd right. so it was good I mean he was nominated for supporting actor but right. it just Patty Lupone was robbed she was her character was it was that was an example of taking a very small part and like making the most of it. <laughs> Because we just said that Scott is actually Florine. I am Florine. Yes, and John's mom is uh, uh, Jessica Tandy. Jessica or uh, Miss Daisy. Miss Daisy. Um, only because I don't drive with John's mom in the car anymore because she has very specific directions that she likes to go and she doesn't like to follow um, series directions. Yeah. Um, Best performance. I think Jessica Tandy and Morgan Freeman, they're both really good. Yeah, but if you had to pick one. I would say Jessica Tandy. I think I would say Morgan Freeman only because... I think I feel like with his character... I feel like she could just be... That character, like... It wasn't... hmm, How do I explain this? With Morgan Freeman, he had to embody a black man Mm -hmm. in the 40s, 50s, and 60s who was reverent Mm -hmm. and didn't show anger. Okay, he's ripping his Mm -hmm. toy apart. And, like, I feel like his... I don't know. I feel like his role was a lot more emotionally challenging for an actor. See, I would say hers because... I mean, I think he does a really good job. Don't get me wrong. I was watching it and it's like, this character could, is in a lot of ways, pretty unsympathetic. Not, could come off as really unsympathetic. Like, she's dismissive. She's really high. She's... And so I think watching her, I feel like she had, her character had more of a journey to go on. Like her character had more of an arc mm. than his does. Like he was, you know, I mean, not, not that it wasn't, but I, I feel like it's, I don't know, I, I, I really liked her performance a lot. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. I mean, obviously I did too. Yeah. But that's a, that's a good point. So yeah. Um, knitting and fiber content. She does need a point. Or cross oh, that's stitch. right. She does. She yeah. does do needlepoint at one point when she's listening to the opera. I forgot yep. about that. Personal history with the film. So this was filmed in Atlanta. I'm from Albany, Georgia. Um, grew up in Leesburg, Georgia, which is about three and a half hours south mm-hmm. of Atlanta. He talks about Macon a few times, which is where he grew up, and Macon is about forty five minutes. Or if an you hour drove from Atlanta. from Atlanta to Mobile, would you go through Albany? No, I wouldn't. Well, no, I wouldn't think so. Because okay. I think what you would, <laughs> now that we're talking about this, I think you would go to Columbus, mm-hmm. which is on the Alabama-Georgia border mm-hmm. via 85, and then you would take Columbus down into Alabama for okay. the rest of the way. They, they go to Mobile at one point. That's yeah. the big road trip. Yeah. No, I don't think you'd go through Albany. But okay. um, personal history with the film. What was I talking about? You're from Georgia. I'm from Georgia. Oh, he talks about Macon, being from Macon, and Macon's about 45 minutes or an hour away from where I'm from. Um, and I I don't know what the movie was, but at some point when I was in high school, the guy that I, I had, a, I had a boyfriend in high school, and my boyfriend's mother, nobody except for at one point Betty Ann eventually figured it out. But no, so nobody else knew. Um, but that we were boyfriends, I mean. And his mother found out about a movie that was being shot in America, Georgia, which is near where we're from, and or where I'm from. And oh gosh, I'm gonna get this out. Sorry, my brain's not working. She said they're looking for people to have cars that are from the era that your car is from. I was driving a '66 Mustang at the mm. time. Which was my grandfather's, and he gave it to my dad. My dad fixed it up for me. And so, but they wanted to take the car for like a week or something mm. like that. So I ended up not you, doing you, it. I could go to band practice. I know, I had to go to marching band practice. Right. Um, and theater practice. Right. But, so, I thought this was this film. <laughs> 
And then I'm like, wait a second, this was 1989, so I was 12 years old at the time. So not, I don't think it was yet. my car. Yeah. So, um, but other than that, I mean, it was just, it's the part of the world I'm from. Mm-hmm. So, it, for you? Yeah, I mean, just, I saw it in the theaters, liked it. Okay. Um, and then, did it ar- deserve the award it received? What else is up? Okay, so also up was Born on the Fourth of July, Dead Poet Society, Field of Dreams, My Left Foot. I have not seen My Left Foot. I would say it's about the same as Dead Poet Society and Field of Dreams. I'd agree with that. I have not seen Born on the Fourth of July. Or my life. But. It's a movie that's like, Rrr! like it's it's a very like, we're gonna show you disturbing stuff, and Tom Cruise is acting. Oh, okay. yeah. It's, it, as you're watching the theme, I'm like, I'm like, isn't it about the Vietnam War? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and my left foot. What's that one about? It's about this Irish poet who was paralyzed and only used his left foot. Okay. Daniel Day Lewis. Paralyzed. What about his left foot? The only thing he could move was his left foot, and he managed to. Was oh, it a true story? Mm-hmm. Who was, who was the poet? I don't know. Okay. Um, so, da, 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 Driving Miss Daisy. Yeah, so, I mean, I don't really have any strong feelings about yeah. the other movies. So, All right, that was Driving Miss Daisy. Yay! Um, worst Star- movie. Worst movie, the Razzie winner. Star Trek V, The Final Frontier. <laughs> um, I think it was released in June of 1989. I'll, I don't. I'll look up facts while you talk. Okay. Um, so this is a Trek, Star Trek movie. Um, Star Trek movies are, there's a legend behind Star Trek movies is the even numbered ones are good and the odd number ones are bad. Um, this is clearly one of the bad ones. The question is, I think the debate is, is it the worst Star Trek movie? Oh. Um, and I... It opened June 11th, yeah. 1989. I would say this is the worst Star Trek movie. Because there's one, which we all know about. Two is the... Is Wrath of Khan. Wrath of Khan. Three is where Spock dies. Four is the whales. Four is the whales. Five is this one. So wait a second. Was there a big gap between three and four? Mm-mm. Maybe a couple of years. I mean... Because I feel like there's a big gap between where Spock dies and the... I feel like they're old in the whales one. They're and they old. weren't old in the Spock dies one. I, I don't... Anyway, know. we'll look anyway. later. Five... Was is, is five the last one of the original mm, series? No. Five is Undiscovered Country. I mean, no, five is Final Frontier. Six is Undiscovered Country, which is good. That's the one with the Klingon homeworld. All right. And then you have Generations, which involves both Voy or Next yeah. Generation, it's the, and... the Ribbon of Time. Yeah. One that one's so so. Then you have, um, the one with with the guy from Babe in it. First Contact. Oh yeah. Which is good. Which was eight. That would be yes, eight. Yes, eight. Nine is Nemesis? I don't remember. Or isn't there Insurrection and Nemesis? But anyway, this is a bad movie. <laughs> um, In summary. It's, it's like, and like, we like Star, I, as you probably may have guessed, we like Star Trek. We watch Star Trek. Um, we're in the middle of a Voyager Rewatch for you, first watch for me. And as they say, when people ask, what is your favorite television show of all time, of all time, all time, all time, minus Star Trek The Next Generation? Yep. So. So. Huge Star Trek fan. Yeah. Do you um, want me to read you the questions like No, no, it's, it's, it's fine. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Um, who was the director? William Shatner. <laughs> That's right. Who helped write the, the screenplay? William Shatner. Um, and, um, I would say William Shatner has many, many talents. I would say maybe being a director is not one of them. He calls this movie one of his biggest regrets. Oh, did, does he? I didn't know that. I think there was, I read an interview with him and he was like, well, I kind of want to make this movie and then I didn't get to make this movie because there's this whole like search for God thing and there was sort of controversy around that. Um... But anyway, I mean, I think, you know, I, I would say that, it, I don't know, he, 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 as a director, he may not shine on this one. Um, so he won, this movie won Worst Picture, 
That's um, what I was going to look up. I was going to look up the Razzies and see yeah, what else. I got it. Oh, you already know? Okay, yeah. I'm going to stop. <laughs> Let you do your thing. I already did my research. Okay. What was it that um, our friend J-U-A-N-A-P from Sweden said that I was controlling? No, Betty Ann said I was controlling. No, she said I wanted to be in charge, and he said I was like a father to you. So I'm going to stop being like a father to you. <laughs> not my real dad. <laughs> You're not uh, my real dad. So anyway, You're not my real dad. Um, he won Worst Director and Worst Actor. Oh God! <laughs> um, so you know, it was it was a bit of a pile on, but like I don't think this is a good move. I'm not. There I mean, some... that's that's how the Razzies are. Yeah, they, they pile on. They, they pile like on. pick a movie and that should have been good and and was really bad, and then they give it like all the awards. Right, especially if someone, yeah, it's, so. but yeah, if somebody in the movie is responsible for. It. Um. So yeah, it's um. I think it was budget. The budget was twenty seven million dollars. It made about fifty two million dollars, which is no bueno for a Trek film. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it it almost killed the movie franchise. Um, so one of the other things is that I think they were trying to do a different company. The special effects they didn't do use industrial light and magic, so the special effects are a little different. Okay, I'm glad you said that because I felt like every single time that they like either had that sequence mm-hmm. where they're they're reliving their childhood pain mm-hmm. or whatever and whenever they were like looking at the view screen everything looked like a projection. Yes, they did rear, they did rear projection for everything. Rear projection. That's what yeah. like, everything looked that way and I was like god that looks like a bad TV yeah. like from the 80s. Yeah. So um, that's part of it. Um, and so, yeah, and it stars the usual original series people, Leonard Nimoy, Forrest Whitaker, Nichelle Nichols, Walter Koenig, Sulu. Who's Sulu? What's his name again? George Takai. George Takai. And, George um, I don't know what it is. James Doonan, Scotty. Um, and... And Worf. Worf is not the Just one. Just kidding. There are some weird Klingons... Um, why is it that start, start somebody, I'm sure somebody has done this, mm-hmm. but somebody needs to do a scholarly article mm-hmm. about the treatment of Klingons in the Star Trek franchise. Well, and like, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. Like, so like, I would say that in two and three, they're well done. Um, well, but if you think about in like the, the, the Klingons in this movie are most like the Klingons in, in the next generation. You've got the Star Trek Discovery or whatever it is, mm-hmm. where the where the Klingons were like these grotesque yeah. monster things, and then you've got <laughs> the original series. They just had like a weird paint on their face. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, as, as Worf says, we do not speak of that time. <laughs> basically, they're wearing blackface. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I mean, the only person who's in it um, who's different is um, Lawrence Luckenbill. Who plays Cybok, who is um, Spock's... Half-brother. Half, unheard of before, half-brother. <laughs> right. Apparently, um, there was... He was originally written as not a half-brother, but then someone decided to be, it would it would tie things together. William Shatner was against that. Mm, well. So, I mean, you know. Um, and he was in the original off-Broadway production of The Boys in the Band. Oh. And in the movie. Um, but the part was originally written with Sean Connery in mind. But he was off doing Indiana Jones 3. The Last Crusade. Oh my gosh, that hurts my brain that The Last Crusade and this movie. Same year. That's That hurts my brain. Yeah. Last Crusade's a good movie. Yeah. That's the one where they look for the Holy Grail, mm-hmm. right? Okay. He was a carpenter's son. Um, so... This was after the Whales movie. Yes. Oh, that hurts my brain because it feel like feels like it's older than that movie. Well, the someone, Whales movie. Someone said it feels like an extended original series episode. Yeah. Like there's actually an original series episode. They go to a planet and they find Apollo. Oh, okay. So it feels a little bit like that. Yeah. Um. It's. I mean, again, I think if I'd seen this as an episode of the move of the TV show, I'd be like, fine, whatever. Um. So they're trying to find God. God lives in the middle of the universe, or the middle of the galaxy. God. Yeah, oops, it's not God after all. It's not all. God. Um, God tries to kill them with his eyes. And there's... Um, with his laser eyes. And there's all these books about it that, like, it's a bean that was a... There are all these sort of books around it that apparently the Q continuum is what 
put that entity in the middle of the galaxy. Oh. So read... when you say books, do you mean like the Star Trek books that people write? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. There's a, there's a deeper explanation to all of them. So, um, yeah. Um, so, I mean, I think part of it is like they really decided they wanted to have a lot of humor in this one. Um, so there's a running joke that they've, the enterprise is in repair and nothing works. Um, Scotty What's keeps... the purpose of that? <sighs> Part of it was they were using the hallways from the Next Generation sets. So it needed to look different. Oh. And I think the other part is that they wanted it to be funny. Well, right? because did did the 107 or 7, 1701, NCC 1701 blow up in 4? Because this was the 1701A and it was like a new ship. I can't remember. I don't... In four, are they? I thought in four they're in a Klingon ship. Oh right. I think it blows up at the end of three. The search for Spock. Spock. I, I'm not yeah, sure. We need to. Yeah. Yeah. I can't believe I don't remember these details. I don't know. Um. So yeah, I mean, it's a lot of lot of, you know, at one point, like Scotty runs. He's like, I know this ship like the back of my head, and then he runs into a pipe and falls over. <laughs> Um, there's a really infamous sequence where they're singing Spock, Bones, and, and Shatner are singing Row, 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 Row Your Boat Around a Campfire. Um, and all I could think of, when they were talking about, like, what song should we sing around the campfire, it was like... What's public domain? Public domain after public domain. domain. I'm like, girl, come on. Turkey in the straw. <laughs> um, and I mean, I feel like, maybe I'm wrong, I feel like... Most of the people were kind of just phoning in the performance, but that might have been the... Oh, we can't forget the part where they're trying to, like, infiltrate the camp on the Nimbus mm -hmm. 3 planet, and you've got Uhuru... Uhura... Uh, doing a fan dance. Uh, Uhura. Uhura. Up there doing a fan dance, and the guys are like, woman, 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 <laughs> crawling up the hill trying to get to her, and she's yeah. like, hi, boys, and then everybody pulls out a gun. Yeah. Um, apparently she was the, she originally like did some singing for that one and they dubbed her over and she was really mad about that. Uh, well, yeah. Cause she sung in others. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So anyway, um, but yeah, so I saw this movie in the theaters when it came out and I remember thinking it was terrible then. Um, my opinion has not changed. Um, it's not no bueno. Um, let's see. The other worst pictures that year were. Nominees were The Karate Kid Part 3. I've not seen. Okay, I saw that in the theater and like 10 times after that. I don't know how... So I was 12 at the mm -hmm. time. I loved all the Karate Kid movies, mm -hmm. or at least 1, 2, and 3. And I, I think 3 was the one when they were in Okinawa. No, that's 2. Oh. Is 3 the one with Hilary Swank? So, I have not seen Karate Kid 3. Mm -hmm. Ostracized villain John Kreese attempts to gain revenge on Daniel and Miyagi... With the help of a Vietnam War comrade, the wealthy owner of a toxic waste disposal business. Wow. No, the Okinawa one was the one I was talking yeah. about that I loved. Yeah. Anyway, go ahead. Um, the other one is called Lock Up okay. with Sylvester Stallone. Let's read the description of Lock Up. With only six months left of his sentence, inmate Frank Leone is transferred from a minimum security prison to a maximum security prison by a vindictive warden. That sounds not good. Um, Speed Zone. Despite the police's preemptive strike, the illegal coast-to-coast -coast car race is still on with new drivers. This it's is like a, a Cannonball Run yeah. sequel. It's a race where fair play, red light, stop signs, police roadblocks, and traffic rules in general have no validity. Hmm. Okay. And then the fifth one, which I'm going to call foul on, is Roadhouse. Hmm. Roadhouse is a good movie. Is it? I, okay. okay. Roadhouse is an entertaining movie. Road ha my la most recent experience with Roadhouse right. is my group of friends decided to have a guys' night, and these are all a bunch of straight men and me. Um, John was not invited because he hangs out with the wives mm -hmm. part of the neighborhood, um, and we're we're joking here. We're making we're making a joke, but it really did happen that I hung out with all my straight male friends, and we had a poker night and watched Roadhouse in the background. Mm -hmm. 
I just remember there being a lot of feathered hair mm-hmm. and a lot of ladies who didn't have their shirts on. Sure. But not much else. Okay. It was not a good movie. I, I, I saw Roadhouse on VHS and remember liking it. So. <laughs> okay. Um, so, did it deserve the worst picture? Can't say, because I've not seen the other ones. I would say it's a pretty bad movie, though. I would say it's the worst Star Trek movie. I... So the one they the one they say is like just as bad as Nemesis, but I don't remember Nemesis enough. Nemesis is the one where Tom Hardy plays young Captain Picard. It says the Enterprise is diverted to the Romulan homeworld homeworld Romula, supposedly because they want to negotiate a peace treaty. Captain Picard and his crew discover a serious threat to the Federation once Praetor Shinzon plans to attack Earth. Yeah. I know I've seen it, but I don't yeah. remember it. But yeah, that's um Final Frontier, Star Trek V. All right. Well, not let's, not not amazing. Let's look and see what our next. Okay. And I what I did was I took all of the previous years that we've watched and I mm. put them in the description of our episode. Oh, good. So, so that we don't... we don't have to remember. Okay. Random number generator. Random number generator, and it's nineteen eighty. How do you remember this stuff? Nineteen eighty to twenty twenty three. Twenty twenty three. 1982. Okay. Let's see and look and see if we've. I don't think we have. But let's I don't think we see. have. No, we have not done 1982. So it's the movies from 1982 or the awards from 82. The, the movies. movies. So I need to look up the awards from 83. Yeah. Okay. Don't look. Well, okay. let me unplug this so that you can't look. Okay. This is my favorite part. Mm-hmm. Oh no. What? I'm only saying oh no because it's a really long movie, I think. Mm. So for best picture, mm-hmm. we're watching Gandhi. Okay. I I remember seeing this when I was little. Yep. But that that I'm ex- I, isn't that a really long movie? I think so. I I it's I mean, I don't know why hang on a second, I don't know how to spell Gandhi. Gandhi is three hours and 11 minutes. That's okay. not so bad. Okay, so, worst... Okay, I've never even heard of this movie. Mm-hmm. It's called Inchon. Oh, that's the Moonies movie. What do you mean the Moonies movie? I think. It's a movie... That cult made this movie? Yes, I think. Okay, let's look real quick. I, we might not be able to find that movie. Lawrence Olivier and Jacqueline Bassett were in it. Okay. Give me a synopsis. Um, During the Korean War, General Douglas MacArthur masterminds the amphibious invasion of Incheon in September 1950. Okay. I know nothing about this. Why is it so bad? Jacqueline Bassett. Director was Terrence Young. I don't know nothing about this. So, I guess that's what we'll be watching. Inchon and Gandhi. I have no idea what Inchon's about at all. We'll try, to watch. we'll try to watch it, and if we can't, we can't. Yep. So, anyway, thanks, everybody. Hope you had fun watching our episode, and we'll be back soon. Yay. Bye. Bye. Bye.